Moj says, welcome back to my channel where we help you go from having nothing to wear to always having something to wear and feeling more what? Stylish! In this episode, I'm gonna show you how I applied the capsule wardrobe method to creating a stylish lounge room. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, can prove, can confirm it works. First, I'll show you the pieces that I got and then I'll walk you through the process of how and why the capsule wardrobe method. Yes, I have a theory that the capsule wardrobe method can be applied to most design areas of life. Anywhere where you wanna be stylish and you wanna have some method to the madness, I think this is it, you guys. I, I think this is it. We nailed it. It's the capsule wardrobe method. My darling! Oh, wearing black linen and then having a white dog. Probably not the best texture combination, but if I were 127 years old like Mojo, I wouldn't care. It doesn't matter. So in this episode, we're gonna unpack how I applied the capsule wardrobe method to choosing furniture that is cohesive, stylish, and has the ability to be restyled in the future in a way that you don't actually have to change your furniture per se. <laughs> I'm so excited. Identify the necessities of your lounge room. Usually that includes a couch, a coffee table, a TV unit, should you wish to have a TV, or even if it's a TV unit or a buffet where you want some storage or cabinets, whether or not you're going to put a TV there. It's like a cabinet piece. A rug, usually a rug is included, and a lamp. Now, the pieces that I chose were this Como 3.5 seater with a linen cover, this Lazaro coffee table, which has a stone finish texture. Then we have the Checkers jute rug. It's a normal jute rug, but it's got a checker pattern. And then we have the Tulum TV unit, which has a rattan texture to it. And then we have the amazing mirror. It's one of my favorite pieces. Now, did you're like, Christine, didn't you say you need a lamp, not a mirror? Correct, but I turned it into a lamp. I actually turned it into a triple function piece. This is the Ravello floor mirror and I added some backlighting to it to then convert it to a bit of a lamp. But let's go through the entire process of how I use the capsule wardrobe method to pull all of these pieces together which now makes the lounge feel like such a vibe. It's such a vibe. Like I love being here and when I have friends coming over they're just like wow it's so pretty and comfortable. Although sometimes they get afraid about the white and I say don't worry babe just take a seat. It's machine washable. We can pop it in the wash. But yeah, some people get intimidated about white, but you know what, that applies across the board between furniture and clothing. But I think the key is to not really overthink about making it dirty, because if you're worried about making dirty, it'll probably get dirty. <laughs> what do they say in energetics? What you focus more on, you create more of. No, that, I don't think that's how they say it. What you focus more on, you create more of. <laughs> Maybe it's not in that context, but I think it applies. So step one are your colors. Once you decide whether you're going to go dark or light, that's going to dictate the kind of shades you're gonna go for. So if you're going for a dark, you might opt for a dark woods, dark leathers, dark materials. If you go for a white and airy, you might lean in towards you know, things like linen, white, and beige, which is very much like the capsule wardrobe. It's those basic colors first. All right, now step two, when it comes to building your wardrobe, it's identifying shapes that complement your body shape. It's also about choosing shapes where when you combine your tops and bottoms, you don't have to think too much. You have a selection of tops and a selection of bottoms in different shapes so that when you interchange them, you're like, okay, this top and that bottom, they will create a nice shape. And we already know they're gonna be color coordinated because we have the basic colors that we talked about earlier. So that's that when it comes to wardrobe. Now for furniture, what I did was I chose the overall dream or favorite destination. Yeah, I went there, I went to the destinations. I don't know whether this is inspired by the fact that I was a flight attendant for a long time and I'm inspired by destinations, but when it comes to spaces, I really feel as though you're creating your space so that it makes you feel a certain way. You know, it makes you feel relaxed. It makes you feel at home. It makes you feel like, <sighs> what's that feeling? Like you wanna come home to it. It makes you feel comfortable, all of those things. Now for me, I associate destinations to those kinds of feelings. Now a destination doesn't have to be a city or a country. It can be, you know, 
your favorite kind of environment. For example, if you like to go to the spa, if you like to go to the office, <laughs> Just kidding. But just think about environments, you know. Again, I go back to travel because like maybe you've been to Spain and you like the architecture there and you like the colors there or you've been to, you know, Asia. Maybe you've been to Japan and you love the environment there. The reason why I say choosing your destination or your favorite destination is in alignment with choosing your shapes is because choosing your shapes really impacts your overall vibe. So it's like vibe, and vibe. You know, maybe you like to wear fitted clothes from top to bottom, or maybe you like to go oversized from top to bottom. That's the vibe. Maybe you like to go fitted at the top, wide down the bottom. That's the vibe. Basically, you're going color and vibe either way. So it's the same steps. And then step number three is choosing complementary fabrics, textures, and materials. And again, this applies across the board. As someone who used to do food styling, yeah, I've done a lot of things. A lot of them had to do with creative direction and you know, styling things. There's always a point at which you come across the combination of textures and you'll find that some textures match and some don't. Sometimes they don't match because it's just too far of a contrast. For example, let's say if you're wearing linen pants and then you're wearing a leather look jacket, it's like leather look is heavy, it gives you the feeling of like warmth and just all things to keep you warm. And then linen makes you feel light and like, ha, ah, breathable. Those two things together can sometimes clash or maybe not so much that they clash, but it's like harder to make them work together unless you kind of color coordinate. Honestly, with style and design, where there's a will, there's a way. If you want a style which is just, it just works and you don't have to think about it and you don't have to like work hard to make it look cohesive, then there are some fabrics and textures that definitely go really well together, no worries. For example, a contrast might be linen and leather, a bit hard to work with, but you might go linen and denim. Denim is cotton, you know, so they kind of remind you of the same kind of environments. And the same goes with furniture. So there are textures that work really well together. Now, like I said, I opted for my favorite destinations that inspired my capsule collection are locations which tend to have an abundance of palm trees, so tropical destinations. So when you go to places like Greece or Bali or the Philippine Islands, you do see lots of light fabrics like linen and you do see lots of woven materials. The other thing that you see that there is an abundance of is stone finishes especially when you go to like old cities, everything is like cement or stone. And so these are materials that I've seen over and over that tend to get paired together. Now, if you pair, you know, your color combination, so I went for the lights, so whites and neutrals, and then add on top of that the vibe of holiday, and then add on top of that the fabric combination or the, the material, com sorry, why is that? Why am I picking that up? This is not furniture. For example, stone look and linen and rattan, they work. I've seen it, you know, it's like I've seen it done over and over again. So I know that these textures work. So those are the three steps that I took when it came to choosing the furniture. A couple of other details that I personally paid attention to. I paid attention to edges. I'm literally talking about the corners of everything. Some corners are sharp and some corners are curvy. The vibe that I wanted in the house was that there was structure to it. Think about like a collared shirt. I love collared shirts and I love blazers, but I also like to pair them with things which are a little bit more relaxed. So think of elevated casual. When it comes to my capsule collection, I have a lot of collared shirts, but I also have lots of tailored pants and they tend to work. And I apply the same thing to furniture. I went with, see here we have like, you know, pointier edges with my cushions and just the overall vibe of this Como couch. By the way, I've included all of the descriptions of these pieces in the description box of this video. Now this couch has its sharper edges, not sharp, but they're like pointier edges. But then with the mirror, and the table, they have their curves. So for me, that was a really nice balance between sharp and then soft. Even with my choice of plants, to be honest, I go in that direction where the plants tend to be more rounded and soft and leafy rather than sharp edged. Although I might make an exception for palms. 
or maybe not, I'm not too sure. So those were additional design details that I really like to pay attention to when it comes to creating any capsule collection, whether that's wardrobe or furniture or anything design focused. There are certain nuances that you look in terms of shaping or even if I'm teaching someone how to build a capsule collection when they love print, you know, that's more of a personal style kind of, um, element and I love to show them how to weave those kinds of special elements into their unique capsule wardrobes. Now you're probably thinking, Christine, isn't the whole concept of capsule not just to have your bare basics, but isn't it so that you can create more outfits or create more looks out of a small collection? Absolutely yes. Now how often do we change furniture? I think not really often, right? Like we don't change it every two to three months. But for me, when you buy furniture, you kind of keep it for a while. I tend to keep it for a few years. The last couch that I had, I'm pretty sure we had it for like 10 years or something. So the reason why I really like this idea of a capsule collection for furniture is because sometimes you might get your furniture, but then you want to change the look and the vibe of your place. And this is why at the beginning I was like, can I make this work for furniture? And then I was like, yeah, absolutely. So this is how we evolve from this initial style. I do get excited about this part because it's all about looking into possibility in the future outside of what we created thus far. So first of all, this couch has changeable covers. So yes, you can remove them and James Lane actually has different colors. They have charcoal. So if you want to go dark vibes, there you go. They have wheat, which to my eyes kind of looks like light caramel. They also have oatmeal, which looks more like beige. This is white. I went for a white, white. First of all, once you change the color of your couch, imagine if this was charcoal, like nearly the color of this. We have different vibes, right? But then you'd be like, Christine, but that's not cohesive with the rest. That's the point about changing the vibe, right? So the first thing that you would do is you would change the color of your couch. I personally, I think the next color I'm gonna go for is wheat because it's warmer. It's like, like I said, it's like a light caramel. And then what I would look at doing is potentially changing my artwork to something that is of that same color palette. We talk about this in an entire module in my ultimate style accelerator program about working with certain palettes and how you do that to complete a capsule. So I'd look at changing this artwork and then I would also look at changing the pots of my plants, right? So you're keeping the same plant, but you might be changing the color of the pot. You might be changing your accessories. So for example, I bought these candle holders, right? I bought these ones and they match my current vibe. But what if I wanted to go, you know, with the wheat colored, what's it called? <laughs> couch and a different colored artwork, then I might go for something deeper or a, maybe even a different shape. And then what about the what about the coffee table and the mirror? They're set, right? They're like a white stone finish. Not everything goes with white. Like deep colors sometimes don't go with white. Sometimes it's a bit too stark. But the cool thing is when you choose your personal style, there are certain things that you're mostly certain about. And I know for me, it's always been light and bright and I love that vibe. So I'm okay with that. But what I would do is I would likely change and update the accessories. So, I put this hat on here on purpose because I don't have any decor yet. I don't have any coffee table books. I don't have anything for the thing, but you know, it is stylized and it's of the same texture as the rest of the furniture. So that's what you can do. When you have decor for your table and you're ready to update the entire look of your place without actually changing your furniture, that's what you would do. You would update the accessories on your table, your candles, you might update your lamp, you might change the flowers that you buy and that will create an updated look for any room in your in your house. So what we've done today is the lounge room. Now I did mention earlier that I turned this one mirror into a triple function piece. So this is a mirror. It's a floor length mirror and of course it's key function is to be a mirror to give you a reflection but it's become like a triple functioning piece for me because number one this actually acts like a lamp so I now have two lamps in my lounge room so it gives us that lighting I just love lighting so much also it's a mirror yes but number three because of the design it also adds as extra decor so my lounge room you know it's cute it's cozy it's not very large it's just like a nice cozy size. So I've got to be savvy with how I, you know, decorate. How can I have more lighting without actually 
boop, 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 so many lights or lamps. So I added candles and in this case, backlighting. Now let's talk about the rug and the TV unit. Now these two are both you know, they have woven material. But the reason why I chose those is because, you know, rattan is a popular material. So if I want to update my accessories, and by the way, like the capsule wardrobe, or when you're growing your wardrobe, like your complete wardrobe, you'll have accessories like jewelry. So you have your capsule collection jewelry, but then you might expand into statement jewelry. The way that I see things like candle holders, coffee table books, this hat, you know, I, I see them as your statement jewelry. You know, you add them, you subtract them, but with or without them, you have a functional lounge room. But when you have them, it's just like, ah, it feels so styled in here. It still feels so pretty. So that's the concept of that. You know, so with jewelry, you can live without it, but when you have it, you're like, oh, feeling nice, feeling elevated. And it's the same with your styling elements, your, your decor. Ooh, I just love this topic so much. When I chose the woven rug and the, you know, the rattan TV unit, it's because these are textures that, you know, I can find them. So when I wanted to style the surrounding area of the TV unit, I was actually able to find a rattan lantern, which I then turned into a plant holder. Yes, I did. And that's the beauty of finding a, a material that's, you know, able to be sourced in many places. Now, what if you don't like woven materials? That's totally fine. What that just means is you choose a different kind of rug and you probably choose a TV unit which doesn't have that kind of woven texture in it. You might opt for something just like a solid wood. So that's how this collection of furniture has become my capsule collection because one, they work really well together as a single piece. You know, they cover our necessities, but I think in this case, more importantly, is that these are colors and textures that I know for my personal style, I can update with a lot of ease. There's nothing better than a couch whose covers you can change. I've never had a couch like this. It's the best. You know, the process of getting another couch and taking measurements and seeing what you're gonna, yeah. You can put that to the side and say, yeah, you know what? It's time, it's autumn. Let's go a bit deeper in color. That's right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I just got excited because you know what we're gonna do next time? Let's do the bedroom. You know, in one of my last videos, I said I'm starting over. So basically that means lots of areas of my life are getting revamped, renewed, rebirthed, and that includes my linen closet. So we're gonna go ahead and create a capsule collection for that. I, did I show you already? I bought this tea towel. I should come closer. By the way, I'm using this tea towel right now to cook, so it might not be that clean. This is a linen house tea towel. It's beige and white. Surprise, surprise. Um, but I liked it because it's, <laughs> did you see my sarong when I went trapped? I need to stop talking. But you know, I, I bought this sarong when I was in Portugal um, because I realized I didn't have a sarong. And guess what? I opted for beige and white. It sounds so basic. It sounds so boring. But guess who had a really well coordinated resort outfit? That's right. I can't say this enough. You probably hear this in every video. I used to resist the simplicity of this. I used to resist the simplicity of beige and white. I used to resist these things because it just seemed like so easy and like boring, but it actually made my life so much easier. <laughs> Once I was like, oh, get a white t-shirt. Not that great. Oh, remember that video where I was like, who wants to spend money on socks? You know, but then I was like, oh, I've got some great socks and I love them now and my life has been changed. So it's kind of the same principle. Um, and it makes it really easy to make everything cohesive. Not that you have to be boxed into this style, but you can grow so many other styles out of at least one neutral color. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for joining me. The sun is on its way down. So if you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. I have made reference to the five stages to building your complete personalized wardrobe. That is the one, two, three, four, five sequence of building a wardrobe. If you are decluttering and rebuilding your wardrobe, if you follow these steps, you will never not have anything to wear. If you don't follow these steps, I can't promise you that that won't happen because I've seen it too many times that a person, including myself, has done a declutter and I'm like, oh great, now I don't have anything decent to wear to a cafe because I got rid of everything. And that goes really well with the Ultimate Capsule Wardrobe Workshop because we actually make reference to your capsule wardrobe 
in that masterclass. So all of the details are in the description box below and I'm so glad to be back. I've missed you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.